Welcome back to this module on arrays. In this part, we'll cover dynamic arrays. Recall that static arrays are allocated on the program stack. Specifically within the stack frame in which it's declared, the problem is that the stack space is extremely limited. It can vary greatly, but a typical stack space can be as large as eight megabytes or even as low as 64K or simply just eight kilobytes on some embedded systems. If you try to allocate an even moderately large static array on the stack, it will run out of memory quickly and cause a stack overflow. Let's demonstrate the limitations of static arrays. First, let's see how big of a stack space my system allocates for programs. To find this out, I'll be running a utility called ULimit. 8,192 kilobytes, or about eight megabytes. Now consider the following program that creates a static array of about 2 million integers and then sets the first and the last, summing them up and printing it out to ensure that we actually use the array. At four bytes each, this is 8 million bytes, which is just under our stack space limit. So when we run it, it works just fine. However, when we try to allocate more memory, say, 3 million integers instead, which would be nearly 12 megabytes, will exceed our stack space size. This segmentation fault is because of a stack overflow. This previous demonstration shows that the stack is small and it's inappropriate to hold or allocate even moderately sized arrays in it. There are also other disadvantages to static arrays. You cannot, for example, return static arrays from a function because the stack frame is destroyed when the function returns. In general, it's best not to use static arrays at all. Don't abuse the stack space. It's small and defenseless. Instead, the better solution is to use dynamic arrays. The difference is that dynamic memory is allocated on a program's heap space. The stack is highly organized and efficient, but small and limited. In contrast, the heap is less organized, less efficient, but much larger. To allocate memory on the heap, we use a function called malloc, short for memory allocation. Malloc is located in the standard library. It takes one simple argument, the number of bytes that you wish to allocate. You can use the size of macro to determine how many bytes each type of variable takes on your system. If successful, malloc will return a generic void pointer, that is void star. We've seen the void keyword used before, which meant return nothing in the context of functions. In the context of pointers, a void pointer is simply a generic pointer that points to a memory address, not necessarily a memory location that holds an integer or a double or any other particular type. Instead, a void pointer can point to any type of memory location. We'll typically typecast the void pointer to the actual pointer type that we want. The reason that it uses a void pointer is so that it doesn't have dozens of different malloc implementations, one for integers, one for doubles, etc. For error checking, malloc returns null to indicate that the allocation was unsuccessful. Let's take a look at a full demonstration. I've copied the failed program from before. Let's update it to use malloc instead. First, we create an integer pointer. An integer pointer can point to an integer or the beginning of several integers, in other words, an array. We'll make a call to malloc. Inside of the parentheses, we specify how many bytes we want, not how many integers we want. We want three million integers, but each one of them takes two to four bytes, depending on the system that we're running. So to make this code more general, we'll use the size of macro. We want n times however many bytes an integer takes. Now remember that malloc returns a generic void pointer. For many applications, what we've done here is sufficient. But I'm going to go ahead and explicitly typecast the void pointer into an integer pointer. This is best practice and what you should do. Let's test it. And now we're able to allocate 12 megabytes of space to hold 3 million integers. You should still do some basic error checking. 
If the return pointer is null, we can check it to see if malloc was successful or not. Finally, what would this look like if instead we declared doubles? The pointer would be a double pointer. We would want to do a different typecast. And we would want the number of bytes that each double takes. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Let's take a look at this from another perspective. Here I have the same code visualization tool that I've been using. I've created both a static array and a dynamic array. The static array is allocated in the stack, in the same stack frame as main. So all three of those values are being allocated on the stack. But with a dynamic array, only the pointer is allocated on the stack. When I call malloc, it initializes memory in the heap. If I were returning from a function, the stack frame and thus the array A would be destroyed. The heap space, however, would be preserved. This can cause several issues, which is why we cover memory management next.